Hey, how's it going, everybody? Charles Zilla, the man bun motivator and the revenue retriever coming at you live again. I think this is day five or six of my own little 30 day live challenge. So I'm excited to be on the show today with uh, my new friend, Prosper Taruvinga of Australia. Uh, Prosper and I have met very recently through the magic of Facebook, the, the, the awesomeness of Facebook groups. Uh, we are both digital marketers and Prosper is miles ahead of me. And so I respect this man. He's, he's tearing it up. He's killing, he's killing it in Australia and he's probably killing it all over the world. I think he wrote on one of my comments threads the other day that he pushed play on about 13,000 bucks worth of Facebook advertising. So, uh, hats off to you for that, man. Prosper, thanks so much for coming on and welcome. Well, thank you for having me on your show, buddy. You have no idea how I've been anticipating this the whole weekend. I couldn't wait. I was like, is it Monday yet? Is it Monday yet? Now we're here. Thank you so much. I love it, man. Awesome. No, uh, like first, I just I just wanted to, I want you to tell your story a little bit, man. You have a really cool, unique story. You've been you've been all over the place. You've had some uh, some struggles. You have a family, you have a, a beautiful wife and a young daughter. Um, I'm a, I'm a dad myself. I have two little kids, um, single, single dad. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I feel like we're, we're kind of in the same sort of trenches together. Uh, but, but if you would, you know, tell me, tell me a little bit about kind of your, your origin story, if you would, please. Well, first of all, Charles, your kids are the luckiest kids in the world. Having a dad like you is one of the amazing things I would have wished I had growing up. All right. So don't ever take that away from them. Okay. So essentially, um, Charles, like you said, man, my name is Prosper Taroving. I, I hope I say that right. <laughs> Your own name. <laughs> <laughs> no, with these things, man. All right. So, yeah, I was born in Zimbabwe um, pretty much 34 years ago. That's a long time. Okay. So obviously, I don't know if any of you guys know where Zimbabwe is. Um, it's one country that's locked between Zambia and South Africa in the southern part um, of Africa where uh, for the last 20 years nothing has been happening there's been a lot of inflation going on there uh, essentially if you don't understand what inflation is is um, you go into a shop uh, you want to buy milk for ten dollars Charles by the time you finish shopping and you about to check out uh, that bottle of milk costs fifteen dollars now see, <laughs> I can see that. Yeah, so so that's how crazy things were going. And that's been going on for the last 20 years. So I kind of decided um, I've got a lot to offer. I can't hang around here and hope that things are going to be well. So, yeah, I moved across to Australia. Um, I arrived in 2011 in Australia with nothing but um, a backpack full of hopes and dreams, okay? And uh, I see Bebop says Victoria Falls is on the bucket list. I'll tell you what Victoria Falls is like, what I left back home. It's two kilometers off a waterfall and it's got a hundred meter drop. Okay. So on that drop, you can do bungee. You can go rafting at the bottom of the river. So yeah, as, as, as by Bebop says, um, Victoria Falls is on the bucket list. So that's what I left and coming to Australia where I had nothing. I knew nobody. And um, yeah, just, Really wanted to start all over again. Um, got here, uh, met my wife here in Australia about four years ago now. And uh, we got along so well. And now we're married and we've got our little girl. And um, yeah, that's pretty much some of the story. I mean, there's quite a lot of stuff in between. But yeah, started off in Zimbabwe, came here with nothing. But now I've created something that's worth noting. So yeah, I love it. I love it. I love it. Now you you also have like a modeling background. People were were knocking on your door. Uh, you were <laughs> you were uh, you, you hit the you kind of have a bottom of the barrel experience, right? Where your wife was like, "Hey man, you need to you need to start owning up to life and make some money, buddy." Right? Tell me tell me <laughs> more about about that rock bottom. You know, part of your story, please, if you would. Not a problem. All right. So obviously when I, when I got here, I knew nobody. And um, the only thing that I really, really had as a skill was talking to people. 
but you can't talk to people if they don't know who you are. So I tried to translate that skill into something that's that didn't need a skill at all. I'm not m- putting down modeling, but I took on modeling so that I would meet other people in order to get ahead in life. Um, but just like anything in life, um, you or like in any other artist, you never get paid up until you're like the top level. Now, for you to get up to that level, it takes a lot of greed. It takes a lot of time, money, and effort. And there we were. We just recently got married. We recently just uh, moved into a new property. We had nowhere to stay. I mean, we had um, no place to sit because we hadn't bought enough furniture. And it was just it was just all over the place, man. Uh, oh, is that me or is that you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so, yeah. So, essentially, yeah, my wife was now no longer working because she was getting pregnant and I was trying to get jumping in from job to job. And all I was getting paid was 50 bucks here, 30 bucks here. You can't survive a family um, and another person on that small amount of money. You know what I mean? So we, we totally hit rock bottom. Um, But I also wanted to grow this business and nothing was working, man. Up until I started working at the back of a kitchen as a kitchen hand and, um, the the guy that I was working for now realized what my skills were. My skills were talking to people. And then he gave me his Facebook to start managing. And that's when I realized that maybe there's a lot of people out there that don't know how to Facebook, but are on Facebook. Okay. And from then on, using him as a yardstick and using uh, that experience, I just started learning all I could do to learn. And all of a sudden, I had one client, two clients, three clients. And then it just started sort of sprouting into what what it is now, an agency. So, yes. yeah. Yes. Awesome. How long ago was that? I'm curious. Okay. That's – okay. I got into Australia um, 11 – I mean, in 2011. So, that's six years ago. So, that's pretty much plus or minus five years. All right. But there's a lot that has happened in between and crammed into this small space. So, okay. um, you know, it, 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 it would need that us to have, you know, days and days for us to unpack all that. But, you know, sure. the gist of it is I came in here, I knew nobody and really worked to get to where I'm at, all from really talking to people and learning as I was going. I love that. I love that, man. Like one of the one of the biggest things I want to encourage like fellow entrepreneurs out there is that you don't have to have it all together. You don't have to have all the answers. You know, people people uh, pick up on BS very easily these days on social media and in person. It's like people appreciate uh, authenticity, realness and honesty these days because everyone's toting their tooting their horn, you know, on on social media. Everyone is showboating. Not everyone, but you get the picture. And so I feel like that is uh, just a huge part of of people's success that if you can, if you can have realness to your message and, and, and that, that just organic feel, I mean, that's just, just go for it. Right. Just, you just, you just kind of went with the flow. And I love how I love, I love that dude. I love that. It just started from like, Hey, this guy needs help on his Facebook. You know, I can help you. Right. Um, Pretty much. yeah. Yeah. So the thing, the thing is, Right now, the entrepreneurs that we have or that are, in, in, I mean, the entrepreneurs that are bringing bread today, we only see the finished product. Nobody gets to see what's happening behind the scenes. Nobody gets to see the struggles, the pain, the drama, um, the times when your lights get cut off, the times when your, your, your in-laws um, disown your whole family. Nobody talks about that. All we get to see is the finished product. So you know what I encourage my students or people that I'm in, in touch with? I'm like, if you really, really love a TV show, go ahead and look for the bloopers, all right? So that 45 minutes that you watch in a TV show, it's all polished, it's all nicely done, everybody is on cue, everybody's points, um, I mean, everybody's lines are on there. But if you go and look for the bloopers, there's like 30 minutes or an hour behind the scenes that you don't get to see where somebody goes, uh, 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 you know, and can't say their line or somebody trips on some wire on set, All right. So this is what I learned in the modeling industry. This is what I learned in the whole acting industry that you would go in for five minutes of airtime. There's five hours 
of behind the scenes work to perfect that five minutes. So what you only get to see is that five minutes of perfect stuff. You don't get to see all the, the yelling and screaming behind the scenes. So I encourage um, entrepreneurs that if you really, really get stuck, watch the bloopers of your favorite movie. That will show you that, you know what? <laughs> it's not always perfect. There's stuff that you don't get to see behind the scenes. I love that. I love that so much, dude. I mean, one of the reasons I personally started, I started a vlog uh, called Man Bun Motivation back in March, and I've been inconsistent right. with this vlog, and it, and it's and it's strictly been a live format. I've uploaded a few videos because uh, uh, I love to create. I love to create things. I love to create videos. Uh, I've uploaded a few, you know, in Snapchat format where you can add music and whatnot. But uh, one of my main uh, purposes behind that was to show my process and my journey. And it's scary because like, I'm, I'm nowhere near where I want to be yet. I, I, I am not successful. I'm in tons of debt. I've had tons of failures. Uh, uh, I, I'm not where I want to be yet. I feel that it's important to be able to show the process of, of me starting from somewhere and becoming something as an encouragement to, again, to our entrepreneur family to say like, Hey, like, do you remember when Charles, like he just did not know what to say or how to say it on, on a live video. And, and now he's got, now he's got prosper on the line. You know? <laughs> so, it did. <laughs> you know, I, 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 can, I can understand what you're talking about because, okay, for starters, English is not my first language. All right. So if I would have stopped or if you would have stopped yourself from going, if, no matter whatever debt you're in, no matter whatever um, hardship you might be facing and things are not working in accordance to how you want them to be, who is to judge and who is to say what the other person has done is the right way? Right. You see, because because who knows how anything should be um how it, how it's supposed to be that's why we've got so many different car brands all right so all these car brands the purpose of a car is to get you from point a to point b all right nobody's gonna say just because your car is a truck i'm gonna get there faster because i'm driving a lamborghini we are all gonna reach that sort of des destination all right so that's the whole thing that entrepreneurs we get caught up in the stuff that we're looking at like you said you're a creator right yeah. keep creating the more you create the more things are going to start working out towards for yourself you know the yeah. only reason people stop moving forward is because they stop creating when you don't have anything to look forward to when you don't have videos to watch back and say you know what charles you you actually looking good in that video it, it motivates you and it keeps you going <laughs> Do you know what I mean? He's like, I'm talking about a men bun, but look at that. It, it, it focuses your your mind to something else instead of you just looking at, oh, I don't know what I, I'm going to do. Do you know what I mean? And have you ever had the feeling of somebody liking a video you did three, four days ago and you're like, I didn't even know this this was still online. Do you know what I mean? That that What do you call that, you know, um, dopamine is it whatever yes 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 the pleasure center. Yeah. yeah exactly that 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 those things that happen in your brain it's just like every time you you receive somebody saying your work is amazing it, it keeps you going you know why because you know somebody out there is waiting for you yes. you know but if you're not doing anything creative if you're not creating then you stall and when you stall you die and when you die we bury you i love it i love it man like that that actually um, kind of leads me to my next question for you is, you know, like I, I'm a creator. I love, um, I love telling a story. I love, uh, my hair is going crazy, man. I, I, I should have put it up in the man bun. Uh, uh, you got a few years on me, man. I got to I got to I got to catch up to you. Uh, <laughs> it's a lot of work. So, you know, that's a part of my purpose every day. Both of us are fathers, you know, both of us are entrepreneurs you know, and, and, you know, I feel like as men, it's hard to not let the fruit of our labors define us, right? It's hard to, to not let those things uh, uh, determine how we're doing or how we're not doing, right? Because um, ultimately, like there's a motivation, there's, there's a, a root of why we're doing what we're doing, right? And so 
my, I'm curious, like what, what gets you up in the morning to, you know, to, to provide for your family? I mean, you're, you're very obviously living from passion, but what is your, what is your why? All right. So it, it can be, see, the thing is that's, that's the one thing that also is, is very delusional to a lot of entrepreneurs figuring out what your why. And if you, you hear somebody else's why you feel like, Oh, Oh my God. So maybe I'm not doing good enough, but, um, you really got to find something that really anchors you towards the future and something that is way into the future. You are in a different time zone, okay. right? Because if you do something that you can only accomplish by next year or tomorrow, you don't get motivated. All right. So backtracking a little bit, Charles, I came from Zimbabwe. All right. Now in Zimbabwe, we, we live in a community set up. All right. But what I did is I, ripped myself off of that community. So what does that mean? That means that my last name is no longer continuing back in Zimbabwe. You know why? Because I'm here now. All right. But me as a male of my lineage, I have kids now. I have, I mean, I have a daughter now and I'm hoping to have um, other kids. What's going to happen is they're going to have kids of their own kids and then they're going to be future descendants. All right. Now, I need to set them up, all right? I ripped them off from everything they've known. Now, I, I'm the founding father. Yeah. You, you guys are going to have independence in, in, on the 4th of July, right? So right. I'm the founding father of my future generation. Right. And since we're the most documented uh, generation ever, if my lineage, four or five generations um, in the future are going to be searching back, it's all going to start from me. Right. Now, I'm not going to be there to defend myself for not having done anything for them. So that's the reason why I've got to work right now in order for them to be a household name in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the future. I love that. I love all right. So, so it's, it's a whole different sort of mindset to I'm starting off. So even you who is listening right now, you probably are also the most documented of the next generations. Your father might be on Facebook, your, your other uncles might be on Facebook, but you, they're not as much online as you are. Right. So if people are going to be tracing back to where it all started, it's probably going to be starting from you. And you're not going to be there to defend yourself of why you ain't shit. <laughs> I love that, man. I love that because uh, for me personally, I feel like the greatest calling that I could be gifted, you know, with is, is to be a dad and to have uh, uh, an inherit a rich inheritance and legacy to leave my children and the next generation and, and their kids. Right. Um, I feel a conviction for, for that. And so, Man, I love that, dude. I really, really like that. Man. <laughs> I hope it's not all too airy fairy. But at the end of the day, I've got a little girl. I just got to make sure she's got a good future. She gets what I did not get. Yeah. She already is anyway. But you know what? You know, just to keep the momentum going. <laughs> Remember, yesterday we were supposed to connect and I was out with her. It was her time, special for her. Otherwise, I would have been kicked in the wrong places. Dude, I have been like connecting with so many people from Australia, okay? So many people from New Zealand. I practically live 18 hours. I'm practically on Australia time, man. I'm getting hard to <laughs> sleep right now. I'm, I'm like living in the future and I need to rewind it to the present. And so uh, I, my apologies to people that have been waiting for Prosper because I, I was telling everyone it was gonna be yesterday, but doo -doo 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 -doo, sometimes we get a little... <laughs> <laughs> Great stuff, man. No, it's all good. As long as long as we're here now. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Now, um, on that note of, of fatherhood, uh, I love talking to other dads in business in uh in, in marketing that that are doing their thing, you know, crushing it. Because I mean, how do you how do you how do you set up your day so that you make sure that your family is still a priority? How do you make sure that your daughter knows that she is treasured and she is valued? You know. I mean, part of us treasuring and value, valuing our children is working hard for them. But what do you uh, what do you do to make sure that your family is, you know, stays a top priority in your life? Great stuff. To start off with, I'm working from home. All right. And um, <clears throat> second second beat is 
Right now, my little girl, they've probably just gone to the shops. It's Monday and they're doing stuff. I've been busy all morning. I've lost track of what's happening. But any minute she can walk through there, she knows. She knows daddy's at home. She knows daddy will give her a hug. She knows daddy is working um, and we, we're together. But every day in my schedule, we have time between 5 and 7 p.m. This is where I give her a bath and then we have dinner together and then I put her to sleep. Okay. All right. So that that time is me and hers time. No calls are scheduled during that time. Um, no work is done during that time. It's just me, my, my wife, and my daughter's time. We probably watch some, um, you know, maybe Peppa Pig or um, uh, In the Night Garden or whatever is, 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 is interesting her at that time. All right. So that's our time. And she knows, everybody knows. No, we don't even have visitors then. And I see Jack has just tuned in. Thank you so much, man. How's it going? What's up, Great. Just talked to Jake a couple of days ago. What's up, brother? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we have that time scheduled. Um, we have that time scheduled every single day. And then I go back to my hustle because there's no point in doing all of this without checking in to see what's actually happening with your family. Then you don't have anything to work towards, do you? Right. I love that. I love that, man. Um, yes. Yes. Absolutely. I think, I think our kids, they need consistency. They need us to have, uh, and, and I'm, and I'm talking to myself here because I am the king of inconsistency. I, I have, I have yo-yoed and I, I'm all over the place and I struggle with the ADD and the squirrels. Right. And I think one of the biggest things that we can give to our kids is that daily consistency so that they have something to look forward to. Right. So that they 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 can look forward to that time with us. That they know. Take for example, my son. He uh, he loves our quality time together. And so when we are having quality time, that means that I have my phone far away from me, and I'm paying attention to what we are doing or what he's saying to me. We're we're you know uh, we're engaged. All right. There's no distraction uh, between our you know the connection between him and I. And, and that's taken some work to get there. And I'm not perfect at it, but uh, um, I love that you're doing that. You know, you're giving, you have that time block set aside and you showed me your calendar before, man, hats off to you for, for, uh, for being so organized. Um, so I, I hope to get as organized as you eventually, you know, but um, I also, I also, see, I also see you live consistently. You're doing, you're doing your own, your own show about 30 minutes a day, right? Exactly, exactly. So it's only today where I didn't do my show because I didn't want to bombard my audience with <laughs> too much of Prosper is a bit dangerous. So. I, got right here, I got you right here, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so that's why we are on your audience. But um, yes, I do go live every single day from 2, uh, 2 p.m. AEST. The reason being life is now this whole new channel that needs to be explored. And I feel like um, you can always copy and paste a status, but you cannot copy and paste your genuine offering and your genuine energy. And I feel like I owe that to my audience. They need to see that. They need to know, like, and trust me. And I got to deliver. Okay. So that's the reason why every single day I show up at 2 p.m. And also, you know, if you have something that anchors you like that to you is you literally are waking up knowing you've got something to do. You've got people that are waiting for you. I think I would have shown you uh, a message that somebody sent me and is like, is there no live today? Because it was a Saturday, right? Yeah. Right. So once you now have, you know, you know, somebody's life or somebody's day is made by you showing up, it, it means a whole lot for you to show up. And if you're working on your own and you're not waking up, anticipating something, we always all have slow days. We all have days when nobody's picking up the phone. If you always cold, cold, nobody's answering your emails. If you call the email, uh, nobody's answering your ads. If you're putting out ads there, but if you're putting out yourself there and people are seeing you and for me, 
I cannot write as much as I can talk. So if I'm out there for 30 minutes um, every single day, that then becomes my content creation for that day. Okay. People are coming to the internet to get information. So if I'm the person providing them with that information, they get to know, like, and trust me. I then repurpose that blog into um, um, a YouTube, uh, repurpose that blog, uh, that, um, uh, that live into a blog, right? And I repurpose it onto other platforms. So I have created content for that particular day and I feel like I've been productive. Love it. Love it. Um, what, who's your audience? Who are you? Who are you trying to reach out to? Who's your target demographic? Great. So my message is to help uh, digital entrepreneurs, especially coaches and people that are starting off consulting, uh, to start scale and grow a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Love it. Love it. Um, tell me, as a digital marketer, as a, as a digital entrepreneur. What do you think it takes to be successful in the online marketing space? I think um, I'm really interested to see, you know, down the road who who's who's still going to be around, you know, a year from now, five years from now, 10 years from now. When we're when we're, you know, that far into the future, I know I'm going to see you around. But 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 there's really a small percentage of people that are going to put in the work to be that top, you know, three to four percent of people that uh, that that last in you know, the, the marketplace. So again, like, what do you feel like it takes to be successful in, you know, the online marketing space, digital marketer, entrepreneur space? Okay, great stuff. That's a really, really good question. And I don't know how much time we've got for that, but to start off with, with marketing, okay, there's only three M's you got to pay close attention to. The first one is your message. All right. And your message is whatever you're saying, whoever you're selling it to, and they need to pay attention to. And then the second M is your market. Your market is exactly who you are trying to reach out to and who should pay attention to that message. All right. Now, the third and final part is the media. Now, the media is anything that you're utilizing, which is maybe your Facebook, this Facebook Live that we're doing, uh, YouTube, Snapchat, Instagram, et cetera, et cetera. Now, a lot of people get very, very romantic, Charles, on the media aspect of uh, the bit of the whole thing. Instead of them perfecting their message that is dedicated to a market. I'll give you an example. Coca-Cola, they were there on the market. What was their message? Open happiness. Okay. And who was their market? Anybody who was having Christmas, uh, birthdays, all that stuff. Literally everybody else, right? What was their media? Their media was um, newspapers, was the TV, was anything else that they utilized to reach to that audience. Now, newspapers have become obsolete. TV's slowly dying. Radio, mm, we've got podcasts now. Do you know what I mean? But their message is still relevant to the market that they're sending it to, but the media has changed. So a lot of people are going on to be very, very big on Snapchat, big on Instagram, Facebook. What if somebody comes in and starts... Um, you know, ripping off everything like what Facebook is doing to Snapchat as we are watching right now. Yeah. Do you, do, do you see what's happening there? Oh, yeah. Right. So if your message is solid and if your market is solid, variables should never change. The media can come and go. All right. Yeah. We've seen MySpace coming in. We've seen Yahoo coming in. All of that is media. All right. So that's quicksand. You don't want to base your business on any sort of media. Right. All right. So a lot of people you can now see that's why they're going to be just a one click wonder, because if the media runs off or if the media doesn't exist anymore, they die because they didn't have a message and they didn't have a market that was ready to respond to that. That's good. That's good. So. All right. So. What would we, I mean, that's a great, I mean, that's a great point. You know, what would we, what would, what would we do without, you know, without Facebook, right? What, what is the contingent strategy? What is the contingency plan as, you know, as an entrepreneur to, to not just depend on one vehicle to, to, to have our message out there? 
Okay, right. So a lot of us are just really, really holding on to the media. You want to make sure that you carve out your market. Yeah. You know specifically who cares and who needs to hear your message. And then you're very specific with that message. You can always use that with whatever platforms coming into the future. Yeah. Does that does that sort of make, make any sense? And you want to be sort of consistent with that message. All right. Because if you keep chopping and changing, people lose focus. You you lose your positioning. Right. All right. Have you ever seen how many people know Colgate as toothpaste? And they have actually started calling um, any other toothpaste. Hey, can you pass me the Colgate? Or these other brands that have actually become the household name because right. of their brand. It's consistency. So no matter what country, no matter what area you're in, you want to make sure your message is, is not going to move. Love it. Your market, right? And you want to grow with your market. Love it. Love and it. you know who you're talking to, all right? Because I'll give you another example. A 26-year-old female can, uh, is, is the same person, but that 26-year-old female can be a single mom. That 26-year-old female can be a career woman. So those are two different 26-year-old females. If you're going to be putting out your message, you got to be really, really specific as to who really cares about this message and why should they listen to it. Right. Right. It's almost uh, making, making your message uh, um, go past any sort of any – sort of, uh, it, it's becoming concrete within, within people. It's, it's a message that people can, can carry you know, within, within their flesh and blood, almost you, you, you're almost pretty, so pretty much love it. Love you, it. you, you were a single dad. Yeah. Yeah. Charlie, you're a single dad. Right. And maybe sometimes you're going, let's pick a brand. Let's say, uh, washing detergent. All right. I don't know what American, uh, brands you have there, but I also know myself, I don't go shopping, but you know what I go for? Something that I'm used to. Right. Something that my mom told me is the thing to go for. Right. Do you understand? I don't look at anything else that's new and improved or whatever. I just go to that brand that has been there since this time. All right. Because I don't watch TV. I don't see all these new infl influxes of new brands. Uh, humans are creatures of habit. So you want to make sure that you're really, really specific and you really really consistent with who you are who you want to reach out to etc etc and jack says habitual buying exactly man love it do you know what i mean so because everybody else is just hopping on and hopping on to the next strategy you're confusing your clients more than you're doing them a service so at the end of the day you know what that does that that makes you obsolete because people cannot keep track of what exactly do you do and who do you do it for and why should they care? Right. So good. So good, dude. I'm getting I'm getting school. You're taking me to school, brother. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they pay me lots of money to give this. people information like this. Yes, I sir. This. I love this, man. So what do you feel like some of the challenges are, you know, as in, in the, in the marketing space or as, you know, a modern entrepreneur or at least some the of the big, challenges you've come, come up against? The, the biggest challenge is we're only seeing finished products. We're not being shown the behind the scenes. And I'm very happy for people like yourself that are actually now taking the honors of showing people what actually happens behind the scenes, okay? Because I'll, sh I'll, I'll tell you something. Um, you know Hussein Bolt, right? I don't know. How do you, how do, you do the, the Bolt thing? All we get to see is five seconds of him winning that race. We don't get to see the 10,000 hours behind the scenes and the cold when he is just chasing air and nobody's there watching. Right. So I feel like the biggest problem is we're only getting to see the finished product. We're not actually seeing the hardship. We're not actually seeing the grind. We're not seeing the work being done behind the scenes. Right. We're not looking at the bloopers enough. Right. All right. So I, I, there should be a lot of people out there that are documenting their journey so that people can actually see that there is work that's being put behind the scenes. We're not just showing up wearing black shirts. Love it. Did you do that on purpose, by the way? 
No, no, man. I mean, I, I you got the time. I don't, man. I'm, I, this is casual. This is casual Sunday. This is casual Sunday. You're already in Monday, so you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that's where the problem is at. We are only seeing the finished product. We're not seeing the work behind the scenes. Yeah. And um, that's that's where a lot of us are, are going wrong. Because if somebody comes up and says, hey, guys, I made 100000 using this trick, that's a big lie. You know why? Because there's a lot of stuff that went in be- be behind the scenes. There was emailing. There was um, other strategies that were used for him to actually – because you can never pinpoint one strategy of anything. Sure. All right. So it's just like this live scene right now. How long did it take you? How many times back and forth did we take to organize this? But people just think, oh, I just rocked up today and all of, all of a sudden I'm on your show. OK, so there's there's a lot of stuff that happens behind the scenes that a few of us are not willing to participate or indulge in. They just want the finished product. And that's what's hurting a lot of business people and young entrepreneurs. Thank you. Thank you for, for, I I completely 100% agree with that. That's a huge, it's a huge issue, man. Let's, let's be, let's be real. Let's be authentic. Let's be open. Let's be honest. It takes work. It's a process. There, there are no uh, overnight successes. Every overnight success was 10 years in the making, right? Um, So let's talk success routine. Okay. I, I, I'm a, I'm a creature of habit. We as humans can, can be creatures of habits, Sometimes we need to break out of habits and, and unlearn habits and learn new habits. Tell me about some of your success habits that you do on a daily basis to make sure that you're on point. Make sure that you're you're delivering the goods every single day for your, you know, for your family, for your clientele, you know, in your own personal life. First of all, I don't do anything for anyone that doesn't help my family. Love it. All right. That's one thing everybody should really, really put into consideration. Do not go out there trying to please people that are not going to help your family. Now, this is what I mean. There's a lot of um, people that influence us around me. There's a lot of people that want to impart their own agendas on us. Yeah. Those people might be in the form of your uncle. Those people might be in the form of TV. Those people might be in the form of email. Those people might be in the form of whatever media they're coming through. All right. You need to know exactly where you're going to go and then reverse engineer that process. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's not going to be a one click sort up story, but you need to make sure you're guarding whatever you're being influenced to. So that means no more TV, no more reading every email that pops into your email box and no scrolling your newsfeed. You know why? Because you don't know what you're searching for. Have really, really clear, defined goals, weekly goals, daily goals, hourly goals, and minute by Every day I wake up, I have to make sure I send out not less than 75 emails. 75 because the other 25 will get lost in the process. So that means I have 50 emails reaching out to people, showing them and telling them that I exist. Love it. Nobody's going to come knocking on your house's door and say, hey, Charles. Hey, listen, man, I know you've got this men bun thing going. Can you help me with my Facebook? Nobody's going to come around and do that. Right. You gotta go out and chase. Yes. It's just like in the jungle, man. There's no way a gazelle is just gonna be limping and then the lion is just gonna push it over and say, Hey, listen, I, I was kind of hungry. Can I just have you for lunch, breakfast, and dinner? You gotta go out there and actually put in the work. Now, I love the passion. Like I I I, hit, I feel and I hear your passion. Tell me about some of the discipline that it's that it that that you how do you how do you do that on a daily basis? How do you do you know if you're start if you're if an entrepreneur is listening and they're starting from nothing, they're starting from always watching TV and always scrolling on the news feed. I mean, what's a good place for them to start to be able to develop that discipline to that to, to develop that hunger to to commit and go all in on doing the doing the hard stuff, doing the work, doing the dirty work. Move to another country. <laughs> That's it. Because we're all in our comfort zones. Yeah. If you really, really want it, 
Go go somewhere else where you don't have, you know, mom throwing in dinner under the table. If you really, really want it, this is this is something that I can tell people that our environment because most of us let's not let's not get ahead of ourselves our parents are um still maybe employed they're working somewhere for somebody and all they know a way of getting money is to go in get your ticket punched and then go out there and um uh you know get somebody to pay for you all right so if you really put your mind to what you want to do and you're working on it consistently cut out anyone else or anything else that does not lead you towards your goals i don't yes. listen to nothing else i don't when i'm working right now if if it doesn't need me to be concentrating which is maybe um um things like creating <clears throat> What, what 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 doesn't need me to concentrate maybe copying and pasting emails here and there um i play motivational stuff behind the scenes because those are the people that are sorry i got distracted i have a question for prosper because i'm really enjoying his energy you had to choose one throughout your entrepreneurial journey how has it impacted the way you work okay uh the lesson all right I'll go back to that. But if you really really want to be full of energy and be like this, don't listen or watch the news because every single thing that's put out on the news is designed to make you feel inadequate. I agree. Everything that you watch on TV is designed to make you feel like a failure. I don't know if you guys have My Kitchen Rules or Master Chef or shows like that that um out there. You see people that are already really good at cooking, people that are really good at their craft being yelled at for not being able to produce a good dish. Now what that tells you is if that guy is doing that and is on TV, then that means I'm not going to be able to be able to even boil toast if that's that's what you need to do. Do you know what I mean? You already start feeling inadequate. Yeah. But if you you know guard your environment Yeah. and and not let any bull yeah. Yeah. shit yeah. in all right and all you have is all the good stuff your visions your goals wow. and you become very focused say it say it come on baby right? yeah man because <laughs> i'm loving this, I'm loving this. <laughs> i know i know because what we have your question every single day that you're sitting in your living room can you imagine me and charles coming in with a truck full of garbage and we just dump it in your living room every hour another truck another truck would you not call the cops on us or really punch us so hard we're back in a different time zone but why are we letting people on radio people on tv do the same things into our brain Even if somebody gets murdered in Bujumbura, how are you going to help that person right that moment? Yeah. Why would you want to know that? Because it's just going to make you so paranoid about going out to reach out to people because you're just going to be afraid maybe just because they look a certain way, they're probably going to do some sort of damage to me. You 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 inebriate you yourself from going on to people and it's in talking to people that you actually start having relationships and relationships turn into business yeah. so the more contacts you make the more contracts you create all right let's just go back to uh b bab she says i have a question for prosper and because i'm really enjoying his energy if you had to choose one of the biggest lessons you've learned throughout your entrepreneurial journey um how has it impacted the way you work okay i'll tell you the biggest lesson The biggest lesson is not all fingers are the same height. So just because somebody can or somebody did something it doesn't mean you can do it too. You don't know what um team they have behind the scenes, you don't know what resources they have from their parents, you do you. All right? Because if you start trying to copy just because somebody's showing up every single day at 2:30, Charles, you know how I do it. It's because I have it scheduled, I have my work, my life revolving around that. Bam. So no fingers are the same, bae. Is that is that is that yeah. is that is that her name, bae? Yeah. 
Hey, babe. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. See what I mean? Yeah. So that's that's the lesson, right? They put a finger is the same height. All right. So you you cannot go out and try and do some things just because you've seen somebody do it. That's why whenever there's a challenge on 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 YouTube, you know that corn eating challenge with a drill, some people hurt themselves. You know why? We are all not built the same. We haven't taken the time to practice as much as they do or know the logistics that a drill actually turns the other way anti-clockwise and it makes it a whole lot easier. You just go in with the whole anti-clockwise rotation and you rip your teeth out or your hair out. Man, I did something for this hair. I'm not going to let it go, you know, just because of some really dumb stuff out there. (laughs) Kill me, dude. Kill me. I love it. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. She says. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Bia says, laughing my ass off. If I had a dollar for every time I was someone's bae for a second. (laughs) 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 I don't know, man. English is not my first language, so you know whatever comes comes right right in front is is how we call it. Yeah, but but that's it, guys. You know what I mean? You cannot you cannot try and become what you're not. Do you know what I mean? Um, and the the one thing that I've also learned as an entrepreneur, Charles, I'm going to ask you one real quick question. I don't know how long we've got left. How long does it take to become a doctor? What is it? Eight eight to ten years. Okay. How long does it take to become a lawyer? Oh, God. I want to say at least six. Right. So why does everybody else just think you can be an overnight success as an entrepreneur? Because we see we let we let the success stories deceive our our, our minds. We let the we, we didn't see their <clears throat> their process. And we say, well I, well, I could do it. They could do it. And meanwhile, the person that is the success, they like that glory. They like that that shining at the top of their at the top of their mountain, and it's it's not as fun to talk about the uncomfortable shit, you know, the the moral failures that they had along the way, the uh, the ugly stories uh, uh, from from back in the day. But now, in the here and now, that is becoming more and more attractive in the market. I feel. Yeah. So at, at the end of the day, that's just it. You you work on your craft, work on what's working on you, and then pretty much just show up for the people that you're doing this stuff for. Don't just be a one-click wonder. You know what I mean? Because once you say you're going to do something for people, you owe it to them. It stops becoming your thing. Do you know what I mean? So, you know. And you got to want whatever you're working on to actually exist in the world. Because if you're just doing it for the money, you'll run short the first day you get a thousand dollars. Because because that's it. That's money. That's what you wanted. But if you want it to actually exist in the world, like I really want there to be a platform where, you know, um, digital entrepreneurs uh, can start scale and grow a business that's profitable and enjoyable. I love it. I love it. And Bia says, thank you for this. Seriously, enjoy the energy and honesty. See, this is, this is what people are, are like needing, right? This is what people are thirsty for, this realness. So, uh, so thank you, Prosper, man. Like you're, you're, you're an absolute joy to have, brother. You're very real. You're very authentic, you know? And I think, I think that, um, oh, what was I going to say, you know, about being, uh, uh, being yourself and being being who you are is 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 such a task these days because we always want we always see someone that is doing well let's let's say let's take russell brunson for example he um he has this idea about funnel hacking and he he makes the point very clear that when you funnel hack somebody that you don't want to copy you want to model the way they did it you want to model their process to success but you got a ton of copycats that are out there you know, copying and pasting the same exact message, the same exact script, the same exact everything A to Z, okay, that uh, is really like that applied to Prosper's market. That applied, that applied to your audience. That doesn't apply to Charles's. I have to make it my own. I have to learn from Prosper and from your message and, 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 and to rehash that in the way that makes sense to, to me and, and, and not, be, not be a copy. 
right? It's like we, we there, there's a lot of copying going on out there. It's like, man, I love Gary Vee. I want to be like Gary Vee. Man, Gary Vee, he's been grinding. He he is his own voice. He is his own machine on online. Exactly. And uh, it's like no one no one's going to be like him. So be yourself. If you're out there, if you're watching this. I mean, Prosper and I, like, we encourage you, be yourself to the 1,000%. So, Prosper, what is the number one thing that you would love for people to take away from today's broadcast, from uh, from your message, you know, in and of its, in its entirety? What's, what's the one thing that you want people to hear from you? What you think is the only thing that matters. What you think about yourself is the only thing that matters. Because anybody else can come around with their own bull. You know why? Because they're just going on their own inconsist. I mean, in- 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 incompetences. Yeah. Some of our parents, some of our parents just want us to become doctors because that's all they've ever wanted to be. So they want to relieve their life through your life. Right. Okay. Some people right. in business say this and this is supposed to be the way it's done. But we are all learning what you, you actually think. Then if you go out there, like you're talking about, and if you say um, you, you, you want to copy somebody else, a them, you become a replica of them. And right. people are tired of replicas. Right. People want authenticity. Right. <clears throat> Right. That's the reason why you have to eliminate all the stuff that comes in, all the influences that come in. Yeah. What you think is only what matters because we already know all this information. We yeah. already know all we want is a book or a coach or somebody to just remind us of what we already know. But you, the last person to make that decision, is this what I really want? Am I going to be the person who is going to lead this thing through? So good. And what you think is all that matters. Nobody else. Isn't that interesting how we know what we need to do, but we want the validation of an outside influence in order to take a step on that? Understandable. <clears throat> we already have all this information within us. That's why when somebody says something profound, you're like, oh, my God, I could have said it that way. Oh, I was actually thinking the same thing. All right. But. As humans, like you say, we do not, um, we are not confident enough in in making our own decisions. Yeah. All right? right. So half the time when I see somebody saying this works on Facebook, I'm like, with what data? This Facebook is like a teenager, bro. Do you know what I mean? It, 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 one day it's moody, the other day it's coming in with acne. It's also really trying to learn its own self. It's trying to really learn its own puberty. So how do you think you're your strategy is a surefire way. Right. See, that's the thing. And then when people see that, they want to jump onto that and think, oh my God, do you, bro, make sure your message is reaching the market that you intended to go to. The yeah. media can wait. That's good. That's good. Hang on one sec. My light just went out. I got to turn that back on. Everybody else is watching this. Thank you so much. <laughs> man, dude, I love your energy, dude. Uh, so it's, uh, thank you so much for the value, dude. First and foremost, like you, just having you having you on has been an absolute pleasure. And I've been following you now, and I just I just felt something click. I'm like, I got I got to get to know this guy better. You know, he's doing live. I'm doing live. Let's let's go live together. You know. <laughs> uh, so let's wrap it up. What what would you say? Um, uh, your big, hairy, audacious goal is that you have in your life, or at least one of them. And for me, what that means is it's something that's so big, that's so huge that you cannot accomplish it single handedly. You, you don't have the, the time in the day. You don't have the influence. You don't have enough influence. You, you're going to need a large team of people and you're going to need, you know, multiple you know, people's income to make this thing happen. What is your biggest, hairiest, audacious goal or one of them? Oh, I've already mentioned it. Some people would want to do it for, for the whole world. I really want to do it for me and my name and, and my dis- helping other people in the process. And I'm going to lay that foundation. Like I said, I want to make sure that my legacy and my heritage goes in five generations deep. 
at least. So that's that's where my, my big goal is, that the second generation becomes a household name in the business world in Australia. That's that's just one of them. And in the process, I'm not going to talk about all the people we're helping in the process. Because you know what? If I start talking about all the people that we're going to help, then I'm going to miss out on the people that are actually going to do the work. All right? So I'm going to work on my family first. I love this, man. So that's love my goal. I love you, man. You're freaking awesome. <laughs> Tarufinga, everybody. Tarufinga, excuse me. Uh, coming out of Austria. You, you say it better than I can. Tarufinga. Uh, uh, <laughs> man, thanks so much for coming on my live. Uh, I, I'm excited for, for what's in our future. I definitely hope that you come stateside to some other conference, and I want to visit you on the, the, the Great Barrier Reef someday. We'll hit the, the waves, the surf waves. Uh, but I just want to thank you, man. Thanks for thanks for coming on. Thanks for the value that you give to the entrepreneur community and for giving me some of your precious time. I know that you missed your own personal show today to be to be on mine. And so thank you from the bottom of my heart. Just just tell me who who to bill. And and that's it. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I was waiting for that. <laughs> <laughs> no worries, man. Thank you so much for having me. This has been absolutely fantastic. Um you, you know the the oh, yeah exactly the the one thing is you you can never you see the effect that you have on others is your most valuable currency okay whatever we do for ourselves we die with it but whatever you do for other people you know you, you, it, it it lasts a lifetime and thank you so much for having this platform and for having me on it even though i mean obviously we could have done this yesterday but i was kind of busy sorry about that again all right in any case, thank you so much, man. This has been an absolute pleasure. Yeah, absolutely. Everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you, everyone that commented and giving us some of your time. If you're watching the replay, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for giving us uh, uh, some of your time. And, hey, follow Tar uh, Prosper Taruvinga. Be a part of his legacy, guys. Go on his Facebook Lives. He's live Monday through Friday. All right. Uh, Prosper Taravinga, everybody. Thank you so much. That's it. That's all I got for today. Man Bun Motivation. I'm Charles Zilla, the Man Bun Motivator and the Revenue Retriever, and we'll see you guys tomorrow.